Hey guys, this is Robert Daly with The Recreational Woodworker, and today we are starting a new series. We are going to show you step-by-step -step how to build kitchen cabinets. I'm remodeling my kitchen right now. I'll show you some clips of that, um, of kind of the process that we're going through. And so I thought this would be a great time to lay out a set of plans that you can purchase to build your own kitchen cabinets. In this set of plans is going to be all the standard sizes of kitchen cabinets. We'll go over sizing and things like that in a little bit. Um, as well as corner cabinets with a Lazy Susan, sink bases, corner uppers, lowers, pantries, basically all the different sizes and shapes of cabinets that are standards. And then you can modify what you need from there. We'll also go over installation, things like that. Today we're gonna start with a sink base. Um, when you're doing a kitchen, there's a few things you can't really change. Most of the time, that's the plumbing. So your sink base is kind of set as it is. Sink base is about 36 inches wide, uh, or 20, 36 inches long, 24 inches wide, or deep, and 34 and a half inches tall. And those are the dimensions we're gonna use. I'm using three quarter inch plywood and half inch plywood. Uh, my drawers, I've already done two videos over drawers, building the drawers that the same way for that. So let's get started and let's start making the sink base. Okay, so I'm using three quarter inch plywood for all of my cabinets. This isn't the prettiest sheet in the world. I'm using paint grade materials because we are painting inside and outside of the cabinets. And before we get started, I just want to say there's about a hundred different right ways to build a cabinet. I'm going to show you my way and there's different ways to do it. There's probably some better ways to do it. There's definitely some worse ways to do it. But overall, kitchen cabinets is a glorified box with a door, some drawers, pretty coat of paint. So the first thing we're gonna do with our plywood is get a clean straight edge. Now I'm using a track saw. I'm gonna be using a track saw extensively. I highly, highly recommend you buy a track saw. Track saws are phenomenal. If you're gonna remodel your kitchen, you're already gonna save several thousands of dollars. So investing in a track saw system will pay for itself in savings. You can make some homemade jigs, uh, homemade straight edge jigs, all that kind of stuff. Those will work fine, but a track saw, definitely worth the investment. First thing we're gonna do is cut off the factory edge. So all I'm doing here is going to get a perfectly straight edge. So I'm just setting this about a quarter inch from the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't even have to be 90 degrees from this guy. So we've got that set up. Now we're gonna grab our track saw. Set our depth. Right there, and now let's grab some dust collection. All right, so now we have our straight edge. Now we're going to use this to reference everything out of. We want our finished cabinet to be 24 inches deep. We're going to build face frame cabinets that have a three quarter inch thick material face frame on them. So we need to subtract that three quarters of an inch. So our cabinet's bodies are going to be 23 and one quarter. So I'm just going to hook my tape, come over here, mark 23 and one quarter inches, make a V. All right, and so then we're gonna come in on the other side, 23 and a quarter inches, make a V. Now, whenever, now this is the confusing thing about track saw, is you want your board, you want your track to be on the keep piece. So I'm gonna come over here. This is my keep piece. I'm gonna line up my tape. I just released a video on putting your new tape on and moving your tape over a little bit. Um, there you go, I'm sorry, not tape, splinter guard. Um, recalibrating your sp splinter guard and putting new splinter guards on. So if I had my parallel guides, I'd just be able to like clip it on the edge, call it good. But now I get to kind of do the little back and forth to get this aligned. 
So because I'm using sacrificial strips underneath, I want to make sure everything's supported the right way, and that way nothing pinches or fall, falls down on me. So same thing as before, set our saw on. And you can see, I didn't have everything completely supported and that almost fell and it could have been bad. Now, I believe I can get, and I can get most of my cabinet parts out of this guy, but I'm gonna go ahead and rip this down to 23 and a quarter as well, just so the plywood is done and then we'll start breaking it down the rest of the way. Okay, so now we have our plywood broken down lengthwise. Out of this, I had about an inch and a half of waste. So now these two edges are parallel, but because I didn't pay no heed to this one, I have no idea if this is 90 degrees or not. So now we are going to square up this edge. I'm using my GRS 16 from TSO, thing's awesome. And I'm just gonna come in about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be a lot. And after a surprising amount of trouble with that, we now have a perfect right angle here and here. So now we're going to reference off of that corner the rest of the time. Now remember how I said there's multiple ways of making cabinets. One way to make cabinets is building your uh, toe kick portion separately and then you just set your boxes on top of it. I'm not doing that many base cabinets. So I'm, and then there's gonna be, you know, dishwashers and ovens and things like that in between them. So in this case, it's not really the easiest way for me to build it but there are definitely times where I have built a separate toe kick build the boxes put the toe kick in place set them on here but that's not what we're doing we're gonna make this full height your finished height of a ca kitchen cabinet the standard is 36 inches your average countertop thickness is about an inch and a half we need to take an inch and a half off of that giving us 34 and a half so I'm gonna come from this edge. Remember, we've cut all of our edges now. We have a perfect 90 right here, perfect 90 right here. These two edges are parallel. We're gonna come up 34 and a half inches. Thanks to my square, I can now easily line that up, push that there. Flip the hose around, and now we can make our cut. So this is cabinet side number one. We need two sides to our cabinet. So now I'm just gonna set this off to the side. I'll set this over here for now. And we'll slide this down a little bit so we're on the center of our table. And I'm gonna measure over 34 and a half again. All right, now we have our two sides to our cabinets. The next piece we need to do is the floor plate. And I'll show you how we're gonna cut that in just a second, because now we have to do a little bit more math. All right, let's talk about our cabinet now. So we have our sides that are gonna be 34 and a half, so that's 34 and a half right here. And then we have 23 and a quarter. And then we have, we're gonna have our toe kick. So we need to figure out those dimensions. Then to get our full 24 inch, we're gonna add a face frame that's gonna sit on about like that. So that's our side view. Um, inside, we're gonna rabbit some uh, half inch plywood on for the back. I'll show you that in a minute. So now let's look at the front of this thing. We 
we're gonna do it's gonna be almost a square so we're gonna have our face frame like that That's what our face frame is gonna look like. Except, you know, a lot more square. <laughs> so, the finished size of this thing is going to be 36 inches wide. Well, when we build cabinets, we have what's either called a reveal or an overlay. So, I'm not going to build my box 36 inches. I'm gonna end up building my box I think 34 and a half inches wide where you have this little part right here it's just kind of some dead space but that allows you to shim align shave level do all the things that you need to do on a cabinet now let me show you this from the top so you have your face frame it's gonna go like that and that's gonna be 36 inches well a lot of times you just do like a little quarter inch overlay, but I've kind of discovered that really it's wasted space either way you go. And by having the inside of your cabinet flush with your face frame here, it makes installing drawers easier, it makes installing doors easier, and it's just simpler overall. So I'm actually gonna come in three quarters of an inch on this side, three quarters of an inch on that side, and have the side of my cabinet. Now you might be thinking, yeah, it's crazy, you're wasting a lot of space. Yeah, there's some wasted space there, but we're doing mostly drawers, so that space wouldn't be used anyway. And that saves me a little bit of effort on the back end, laying out drawers and installing drawer brackets and things like that. I actually don't have to buy any drawer brackets aftermarket. So that is our cabinet. This is the back that we're gonna put on in a little bit, so don't worry about that too much right now. And now we have to the side, the outside measurement, minus three quarters, minus three quarters, so that's 34 and a half. So we want our box to be 34 and a half inches, minus three quarters and three quarters, so that's an inch and a half again. That would give us 33. So our bottom floor of our cabinet is going to be 33 inches. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'll detail us all out in the plans. And I'm doing this purposefully to make other things with the cabinets easier and the sink will still fit in there. So here we go. So we have our cabinet side here and now we need to do our toe kick. I made this nice little jig for my toe kick. Our toe kick is going to be four inches up, three and a quarter inches deep. And when we're all said and done, the toe, actual toe kick sitting on the floor will be three and a quarter inches deep once we add the face frame and the one by four toe kick and then whenever the face frame sits down three quarters of an inch it'll be three and a quarter inches so it'll be three and a quarter and three and a quarter all said and done this is what we're following with the plans like i've said eight times already there's a hundred right ways to build to build a cabinet this is the way that we're doing it so i made a little jig off cut scrap piece of plywood scrap piece of plywood and so I can come and I can just reference it right here. Take my pencil, right there, I've made my line. Now I can use my track saw, plunge cut it, or I can cut out with a jigsaw. My track saw is already right here, so I'm just going to use my track saw right there, line it up with my line. I just stopped right there at my line. I will have to notch it out a little bit with my jigsaw, but this is going to give me a lot cleaner lines than if I used, hmm, how do I do that? Ah, hmm, what's the best way to do that? I will do this. 
because I made my jig ambidextrous. So I've got that right there, right there. So I thought I'd bring you in close so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take my saw and I'm just gonna plunge it down and then I'm going to stop. Hold on, let me get my jig back here. And I'm just gonna stop at that line. You'll see I didn't cut through because I flipped it over. So I'm, gonna so I'm gonna plunge it down. Go forward. And then stop. And then I'll just finish it with my jigsaw. So I'm just going to finish the cut with my little Job Max jigsaw. I really need to do a review over this thing. It's not the best jigsaw in the world. I already know that, but it's the best jigsaw I own. So use the tools you use the tools you got, right? Oh, unlock and. And there you go. Now I'm sure I could make some type of uh, router jig or something like that, but this is simple enough. So this cabinet is done. I'm not putting shelf pins or anything in this cabinet because it's a sink base. If I do anything, it'll have some pull out trays on the bottom and definitely those little flippy outy guys on the front. So not doing anything there. All right guys, so I have our base cut to size now. We're just going to assemble this with pocket screws. I know some guys use dados, you can use dominoes, you can do all kinds of things. But this isn't going to hold a lot of weight. So some pocket screws and some glue to hold this thing together is more than strong enough. It's going to last the 20, 30 year life cycle of kitchen cabinets. I'm not worried about it. So that's how I build my cabinets and I believe it is sufficiently strong. If you want to do dados and stuff like that be my guest. I have no doubt that that is a stronger way to build cabinets, but sometimes good enough is strong enough and strong enough is good enough. So here we go. So I have this cut to size. Now it's 33 inches because of the way I explained it earlier of wanting my face frame to be flush with the inside of the cabinet. And then this is 23 and a quarter inches. However, the way I'm going to attach my back I actually want this to be a half inch shorter. I'm gonna do dados on the side, or I'm gonna do rabbits on the side for my plywood back, and then it's going to staple into the bit, the floor of the cabinet, which will give it a little bit more strength. So I actually need to take a half inch off the width of this. So I'm just gonna set it like this on my track saw table. And I hope you see like the usefulness of a track saw. I don't have like the smart cross cut built yet or any of those cool jigs. I'm just using a square and a pencil, but it's super quick and easy. And I'm not fighting plywood through a table saw. In fact, my table saw is full of crap right now. So I'm gonna take a half inch off. So 23 and a quarter, that takes me down to 22 and three quarters. Right there. I'm just put a little V groove right there. and we will take our half inch off. And now this is ready to get its pocket screws. So let's go do that and then we'll come back and we are ready to cut our rabbits on the side panels. All right, so now it's time to put our rabbit on the back of the cabinet. We're gonna go three inches, three eighths of an inch deep and a half inch, wait, yeah, three eighths of an inch down and then half inch in to hold our half inch plywood or 12 millimeters, whatever you're doing. Um, so I've shown you a way to do this on the table saw that is honestly my preferred way of doing it just cause it's fast, it's easy. If you're doing a half inch um, back panel, you don't even have to move your blade if you're using a full curve blade, super quick and easy but this is a perfect time to play with my new router. I just bought this bad boy from, from Texas Toolcraft and I've been dying for a chance to play with it. So let's get this guy set up and, sorry, I'm checking to make sure I'm still in frame here. 
So this is the Fez tool. OF 1400 EQ and this is the first time I'm using it. I'll do a separate video over it later. And I also bought the edge guide right here. All right, so I could 100% be done with this if I just use my table saw method, but still playing here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just scribing a line a half inch from the bottom right there. And let me come right in right there. Okay, so scribing a line a half inch right there. I went ahead and put um, a three quarter inch blade into my router. So now it's time to slide these guys in to where it's a half inch. So I think that is pretty close and then I can use the micro adjust on the Festool router. Still doing playtime here so if for some reason you have a router and not a table saw this this is the way to do it. Obviously I don't have it plugged in yet so now we're just going to reference it on the edge come down that's going to be my zero and right there so I'm going to zero it out to there. Cool. And now I'm going to come up 3 eighths of an inch. Right there. And then lock that. Cool. So now I'll plunge down that final 3 eighths, 3 eighths of an inch. And now I need to make sure I am coming in my half inch. So I'm real close to my line. With the Fez tool base, I can micro adjust it to be my perfect half inch line. So I'm gonna cut right down the middle of my pencil line like I want to, tighten that down. Now we are about ready to cut. So let's install our dust collection. So dust collection shroud can go right there. Has two dust collection ports. This one goes on the other side. Okay, right there and right there. Okay, got it. Woo. And that locks in right there. So the reason you put the top one on from what I've seen from videos is it helps collect the dust and pump, channel it that way. Now we're gonna plug in our new router. Now we have max suction, and we're finally ready to make our cut. This was absolutely ridiculous of how long it took me to set this up. I totally, without a doubt, should have done this on the table saw. All right, so man, this thing's stable. So all right, we're ready to go. All right, so that was a lot dust free. So it actually seemed like a punch a little bit more than halfway. That's fine, it's okay. Now I'm going to do my other one. And now I've now used my nice Festool router. Yeah, it took forever to set up, but look at this face. This is a happy face of someone who got to use a Festool router. So when I do this, you're probably gonna be wondering, what the heck is that on the back of his head? So I got really annoyed with running my lav mic through my shirt and clipping it on here. So I just rigged it up on a spare hat so I can just put on the hat and have my lav mic rigged up. And it's just, I did it today, so I haven't really got that graceful with it. But that's what's going on, just because I felt like it was so much easier just to swap hats to put on my mic versus run it through, connect it, all that stuff, because it gets all sweaty in there, I don't like it. So I'm ready to glue up my cabinet. So I've got my side here, my bottom here. The cool thing about our toe kick jig is it automatically make, allows you to make a line for where your bottom's gonna go because it's gonna go flush with this toe kick. We cut that with a track saw so we know it's accurate. Put a line right there, line those two lines up, and you're good. So here's what we're doing. 
we're gonna stand this guy up like that. And to do that, I'm just going to actually, yeah, that just, I'm just gonna hold that up. So we're gonna hold that right there. This is why having a flat workbench is super important is because it's gonna make this assembly process a lot easier. Then we're gonna take this guy, put it right there, bring those together, and then screw it together pocket screws. So the first thing we need to do is add glue. So I'm just gonna lay this guy down and put a bead of glue. All the way across. Okay, you see I just put a plethora of clamps right here. So I'm gonna flip that down, flip this guy up, and then butt them together. Right there, okay? In our essential clamps videos, I told you that this was a, one of those essential clamps. This is your right angle clamp. So I'm just gonna come in here to the bottom. It's flush because they're both sitting on my flat workbench. This is my Polk Smart Bench, by the way and clamp that together and nice and tight right there. Now I need to come up to the top. I can do that two ways. I can use these little guys I got from FastCap, they're just little right angles. Clamp it together, clamp it together and hold it. That's one way. Or I can use this clamp that I told you wasn't essential. I don't use it that much, but in this case, I think it'll actually be useful. So let's see if it's actually useful today. Hmm. I can't get it on here. There it goes. Yeah, so right there. And will it clamp? Eh, it does the job, but I'm still not in love with it. Okay, so make sure my lines are flush right there. And now we're just gonna run our pocket screws in it. Always go to your pocket screw closest to your clamp first. All right, so that is the cabinet side one. Now we're gonna do side two. We're gonna take our glue, run a bead of glue down. Right there, you can also put your glue right here. This segment of the video is brought to you by the GlueBot. The GlueBot available on Amazon via affiliate link below is a great little glue bottle that allows you to put glue in all manner of positions. All right, so same thing as before. Corner clamp right here. We just need to make sure we're flush. Your finger is an excellent test to tell you if you're flush or not. Then, uh-oh. This clamp, all right. Can't figure out how to turn it. Nope, yeah, okay. That clamp's gonna go right there. Make sure it's your pencil lines are lined up. Make sure you're flush with the bottom. This one needs a love tap. Where's my love tap? Burr. Ow. All right, so that needs a little love tap to go down a little bit. And we're good. All right. So now we're gonna screw this in. All right, so that is the base of our cabinet. You'll never see these pocket screws again once it's installed. And like I've already said, this is more than strong enough for a cabinet. All right, so now let's spin it around. And now we're gonna do a back stretcher. We don't have to do it, well, actually no, I'm gonna do a front stretcher. The front stretcher is simple. I have a little piece of scrap wood right here. Now I'm gonna do back stretcher. Sorry, I keep distracting myself. I might have to cut this out a little bit once it's done, but mainly it's just to give it just a little bit of rigidity while I'm doing the rest of my work. And it's just gonna go right here. It's already cut the length with some pocket screws. We can face it down like this, or we can face it up. I'm going to face it down 
like that with my pocket screws to the back. And that's just gonna give me something to mount my plywood to on the top. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little clamp right here, approximately three quarters of an inch down. That will hold it for me. Now we're gonna come back, put glue on, put glue on, and you see that's just gonna hold it right there for me. I'm gonna come back with my corner clamp. If I'd quit sitting behind me, that'd be swell, wouldn't it? All right, so. Back out to your home. All right, so I'm gonna get that flush and flush. So it's gonna be flush with the, the rabbit I put here and flush with the top. And then now we'll just run a screw in it. There we go. Now I'm gonna take this off and you see this is just held in place here. It's not actually aligned. If I use that for alignment, it'd be proud. So now I'm just gonna take that off. Come back in here with my corner clamp. Clamp it. Make sure it's flush. Make sure it's where we want it to be. And go ahead and put my other screw in right there. And go ahead and put a screw in right here. There we go. On my other cabinets, I'll do two spreaders. I'll do one on the back like this, and then on the front I'll do another one. I actually need to find a board to make a, a spreader just for the front. I might have to cut those out for my sink later, but I'd rather cut them out later and have the opportunity to have them than not have it at all. It just makes it a little bit easier to get the face frame on. So I'm gonna do that off screen, come back and we'll fit the plywood back. Okay guys, so we have everything assembled. I have my spread top and bottom spreader right here. The bottom one's just, or the front one actually is right there. And now I've got my back cut to size already. So to measure it, you measure from the bottom of the cabinet base. Not where it's gonna sit on the floor, but the floor of the cabinet. Up to the top, that was 30 and 7 sixteenths. Then our width from the inside of our rabbit to the inside of the rabbit, and that was 33 and 3 quarter. And as long as you cut this part square, that's gonna square up our entire cabinet whenever it locks into place. So we are gonna go ahead and glue this. Okay, so now we have glue all the way around, so we're good there. And let me move the camera just a little bit. There we go. So I've got glue all the way around. Your plywood will have a good side and a bad side. Put the bad side, in this case, up, so it's gonna go against the wall. This, Both sides of this plywood are actually really nice, so that's not a problem. And now we get it in place, and we want Pretty much a tight fit. Push that down. And I always start at one side. So get that flush right there. And then I'm gonna work on getting it flush. I'm gonna get it flush all the way across the top, right here, where that is flush. And I'm gonna go ahead and staple that down. I'm using one inch uh, 18 gauge staple, so it's not gonna come through. Okay, so the top is flush. Now we're gonna go and make sure that it's butted up against this entire edge over here. And it looks like I've got just a little bit of a gap at the bottom. So my box was about a 16th out of square overall. But you don't really have to worry about that when you're assembling it because your back panel squares it up. And that's another reason I use half inch is it's just a more substantial piece of material and it will hold better and just be stronger. So now we'll shoot that into place. There we 
go. Now I'm going to spin it around to the other side. We're going to sight down it. All right here. So we are good. That's what we want. And then our final part is the bottom. And that should have squared everything up, so we're good. And then we'll just shoot it. All right. We have just built a cabinet box. It is now time to build our face frame. And once our face frame is attached, this box is ready to get installed. Pretty easy, right? So I've gone ahead and cut all my face frame material. I've put my pocket screws in here so you can see how it goes. Now there's some basic parts to cabinets that we're gonna talk about. We have rails and styles. When you think of rail, think handrail. It's gonna be horizontal. Your styles are your vertical pieces on the side. Typically, you make your styles the full height of your cabinet um, box minus the toe kick. That way, you're not looking at any end grain. The tabletop will sit right here and cover that end grain. And that's just kind of the standard way to do it. Does it matter if you do it the other way? Eh, I don't really think so. I just think this is kind of the standard way and it does typically look better. You, in this one, we have three rails. We have the top rail, the bottom rail, and the uh, mid rail, which is gonna basically be our faux drawer faces that we're gonna have there. Um, I'm also going to do a center style here to divide the doors. However, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to cut it to size. I could measure this out and tell you what it measures, but after I get it done, I can actually cut it to perfect, to cut to fit, and that's just gonna give me a better look overall. Now, over here, I'll look for the red uh, marker. Over here, you'll notice my style is longer. This isn't going to be in the plans. This is just something that I'm doing um, custom in my own kitchen, and I'm not gonna show it in the plans, but basically, my dishwasher is gonna go right here. So I think it would look better, instead of having the toe kick recess, I think it would look better having the style go all the way over to the floor and finish off, then there'd be the dishwasher, because there's not a toe kick underneath the dishwasher anyway, and then start the new cabinet with the same to the floor guy. I'm going to do this around the oven as well. Um, it's just a little detail that I think looks really nice. But on the other side, I'm going to have another bank of cabinets that's going to have a toe kick, and so I want that to look continuous all the way around until I get to the next stop in the run of cabinets. This is ready to assemble. Everything's cut to size. The way you measure it is, let me show you. So the way we measure our layout, and because of the way we're doing our face frame overlay and the inside is gonna be flush, it makes it a little bit easier. So we have our style. It is the height plus three quarters of an inch. So we have that overlay and that way the lip is completely flush on the bottom as well. So from here to here, plus three quarters of an inch. And that's just going to line up flush with the inside of our cabinet. It's gonna make sanding it easier, it's gonna put make doing drawer slides, pullouts, cabinet doors, just a lot easier. Okay, so that is our style. That's gonna go on both sides. Our rails are also super easy because they're now the same length as our spreaders. So it's just going to go right here. And you can see that that just barely fits in snug right there. Actually, it might be a half a millimeter off, like a 32nd of an inch off right there. So not an issue at all. That's gonna nail on right there like this. And then on the bottom, it'll be flush with the bottom. And that way I can do a pull out if I need to, or just slide things in and out easily. So that is our face frame construction. 
very easy to do. Our uh, drawer banks are all their top drawer is always five inches opening so that's easy as well so i'm going to assemble our face frame come back and tell you a little bit more about it we are ready to install our face frame i did a little bit of thin of detail work on the face frame um, before i'm bringing it over here i just gave it a sanding with 120 and i did put a little chamfer on the edges just to add a little bit of detail it's really subtle but now it is time to get this guy attached and so we're just going to set it on like this um, and then uh, pull it to the frame because we know the back is square and this is all the same dimension so it should be pretty close to square and glue it in place glue and nail it in place now if I was doing a really high-end uh, hardwood cabinet I would probably do some dominoes and then just like clamp it on so there's no nail holes this is a very this is a paint grade cabinet so we're not really worried about that so glue is your friend and one thing about building cabinets this way is if let's say in 10 years you want to go back and you know put hardwood on here or something like that you can knock these face frames off it takes a little lot of work because glue is pretty darn strong but you can knock them off put new face frames on and boom you've got new cabinets as long as you're not changing your layout too much we have done that on several kitchens before so we got our glue on simple 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 Make sure our face frame is oriented the right way. And now we're just going to set it on and try to get it aligned as close as we can before um, we let go. There we go. Now I'm actually going to start on this bottom edge because this is what you're going to see. If that top edge is proud a little bit that's easy enough to sand down the top the countertop is going to hide that anyway but you're going to see this edge right here so i'm going to get that aligned and it looks like we're really really good there so i'm flush with this so i'm going to pin it then i'm going to come over here and i'm going to pin it again then I'm going to looks like I'm gonna pull it flush right there make sure it's flush pin it again pin it one more time so I've got four nails in there I'll go ahead and put one right in the center of those now that I have that done I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my glue squeeze out and that is ready for its final sanding. So now I'm going to work up this edge, go get the other edge, and the last thing I'll do is the top. And it looks like my top is about, I don't know, a 16th proud, but that's no biggie. That, that'll plane right off. So now, we're gonna push this flush again. There pin it it is flush all the way down and that'll hold it while the glue dries tada here is what's going to be our sink base but all of the kitchen cabinets are pretty much built this exact same way i am going to do a second video over our corner cabinet that we're going to build because that's going to be kind of complicated but all the lower cabinets same basic construction you have two sides you have a floor you have a front and back spreader half inch plywood back gives you a really strong box looks great your face frame has a, quite a bit of overhang that's going to allow us to really flush this up and fit it with the other cabinets scribe it to a wall if we need to the flush uh, sides right here make it really easy to mount drawer slides you can just use the side of the cabinet right there for the drawer slide the other one right here and then here our doors hardware will just 
clip on right there. We could very easily add shelf pins up for shelves. We could very easily add more face frame uh, drawer inserts and put drawers in here. Um, we could make this taller or we could make this wider or narrower just by changing the dimensions of the spreaders and a little bit of math. And that's it. All of my base cabinets will be built basically the same way. In the set of plans I'm going to come out with, I will detail all the standard dimensions. And what I mean by standard dimensions is the standard dimensions for kitchen cabinets are in increments of three starting at nine inches. So it goes nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. And then from 24, it goes to 27, 30, and then 36. And those are your standard kitchen cabinets. So I'm going to include those in the plans and as well as drawer and just regular cabinet door setups, as well as a few other specialty ones I come up with, mainly the corner cabinets and a um, cookie sheet cabinet that I'm coming up with. So those will be in the set of plans, so be sure to check that out. I hope you see that this is super easy. Anybody can do it. This is an exceptionally strong cabinet that's going to last well over 20, 30 years. And by then it'll be time to remodel anyway because these will look old and dated. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you next time and we'll cover doors, drawers, all that kind of stuff. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you later.